your boy Jerome and I'm here today with a review for Love and Hip Hop Hollywood Season 5. Uh, this is the reunion part 1 so without further ado we're going to get the video started. All right, so before I even get started, there's a little bit of stuff that I'm gonna talk about that happened before the reunion, even, well, after the reunion is aired. So, you know, um, you know, the cast, they always do the check yourself on VH1 where the cast reacts to the show. Um, so the episode when um, Amber Diamond, Bridget Kelly, Sean Love, and Brooke got into it, um, Donatello was on the Check Yourself, and Donatello's actually been on Check Yourself this whole season, pretty much reacting to every episode, basically. So, you know, they got to the scene where Sean took off her wig and, you know, hit Bridget with it. Now, Donatella said in her um, Check Yourself, when she reacted to it, she said, you know, that um, Sean should have took her own wig off instead of taking Amber Diamond's wig off. Well, Sean saw, saw that, and, you know, she had something to say on Instagram on Love and Hip Hop T's page, and, you know, she's talking about basically how she got even a white bitch coming after her, which I thought, okay, I don't think, and, and I didn't see where she said anything wrong, and then we also saw where Apple liked the photo, so I'm like, hmm, is there something going on between Apple and, um, you know, Sean, and then Snoopy, Akbar's wife, she commented on it either, commented on it too, talking about how, um, you know, Donatello was a hater, and I'm like, uh, nobody asked for your input with your saggy, droopy face. And then also, which happened yesterday, we saw that little Lyrica, she went off on Marcus, Solo Lucci, and Moniz. And the reason why she went off on those three is because before the reunion aired, you know, VH, um, the producers had asked, you know, some of the cast members their opinions on you know, Clutch and Pearls and Little Lyrica's marriage. In La Britney, she didn't have any comment. Alpha didn't have any comment. And Paris didn't really have any comment either. But Monice had something to say. And, you know, Rockstar, not Rockstar, but Solo Lucci and Marcus all both had something to say. So then Little Lyrica, she tried to do a clap back. And I'm going to actually try to read what she said to, you know, each and every one of them. So when it came down to Marcus, she said, you, you come up in my baby shower after saying this fake ass shit and you, and you of all people know better. I swear to God, you all, y'all are pressed and Lucci A1 got you on the show. You deaf, fake as fuck and know better. Y'all can suck my dick with these lies. Safari so said it ain't true. And to be frank, I should have never agreed to this fake ass storyline, which was supposed to be he flirted. He, and cleared up by the next episode. It got so juicy, niggas didn't want to clear it up, and that's when I got pissed. Y'all some bitch ass niggas to carry this on and worried about it, about the fuck I wasn't doing. Y'all can suck my dick, period. That's what she said to Marcus. So then when it came to my niece, she said, you sound like a dumb ass, jealous, miserable bitch that you are. And that's why I didn't respond to your fake ass messages the other day talking about you bald and all that sh this shit bitch my cheeks and bitch bitch my cheeks and bitch is real how you call him the kettle black hole and you got fake boobs and a wig on child please you just mad because you asked me to do a joint ep with strangled with strangled singing ass and politely decline you bipolar bitch Scary ass. I always got something to say when I'm not in your face. Kiss my ass, you miserable bony. Can't keep a man or woman lonely. Nobody with titty done ass. Now, I was being nice. Don't push me. Monista type, Monista type play victim in your face. Talk shit on camera behind your back. You the fakest bitch alive. Actually, she spelled, she said bitch alive, not alive. She need to go back to school and learn how to, uh, uh, she needs to, that was, I felt stupid reading that shit. Like, God damn, like, all the grammatical errors and everything in there, but that's pretty much it. So, um, and also, to pimp, to, to um, touch on Monique. So, basically, Monique was like, you know, everything about them is fake. 
you know, fake booty, fake cheeks, fake everything. So she doesn't know what child, you know, she really don't know what that child's gonna look like, which I thought that was kind of wrong for Monique to say that because, you know, she always, she doesn't want people talking about her. So I didn't feel like she was right to talk about what their kids gonna look like. All right, so now we are going to start the video with the review. So um, the episode, not the episode, but the reunion was hosted by Nina Parker. So, you know, first and foremost, why the hell was Pam's wig all the way down to her fucking forehead? I'm like, Pam, whoever did your wig did not do it good for you as usual. And then her outfit, I'm like, what the shit is that she got on? So, you know, Nina starts the uh, reunion out with Clutch and Pearls and Little Lyrica them. So she asked Safari, did he sleep with uh, Little Lyrica? He says no, that he did not sleep with her. So that's finally once and for all, which we all knew that is cleared up. And, you know, so, um, she, you know, Safari says that Ray J was the one that was, you know, being messy and, you know, spreading it all around like wildfire. And then Big Lyrica says no, that that was Kay Michelle. So then came Michelle, you know, she says her input. She's like, you know what, I'm sorry for involving my friend, but she wasn't, you know, sorry for um, Clutch and Pearls and Little Lyrica. So then um, Big Little Lyrica and um, K. Michelle start arguing. Now, mind you, Little Lyrica is not on stage. I'm pretty sure she's backstage or something like that. So then, you know, um, Big Lyrica, she starts to yell at K. Michelle and tell her, K. Michelle, don't you argue with her. And I'm like, oh my God, like, we just started this reunion. And y'all already arguing, but what the fuck? And I tweeted that I think Little Lyrica and uh, Clutch and Pearls should thank K. Michelle because if it wasn't for K. Michelle, this whole storyline would not have been a thing at all. Because thinking back to you know th their storyline, originally when before the show even ate, before they even started filming, I believe last year that remember he was in um, the hotel room with the girls. And he got caught up. And then also remember uh, when he was supposedly got robbed in that um, ho hotel room. That was when they got back together. So the timeline with all this stuff makes no sense to me. So then, um, you know, they get K. Michelle off of the stage. So then, you know, um, Nina asked, you know, Clutch and Pearls some questions. You know, she, the first question she said, was he unhappy with, you know, Lil Lyrica's response, he says, um, when he found out, he says that everything that Nina was asking him, he didn't recall, and then he got little Lyrica in the background cackling like a fucking hyena. I'm like, girl, shut up. And then Nina's like, but you know what? Y'all put y'all lives out here for everybody to see, and then we get to the reunion. This is redemption. And, you know, little Lyrica's like, well, you know what? I, I support whatever my husband does. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, y'all are all backpedaling. Because then somebody mentioned that, um, well, no, Nina mentioned to Big Lyrica when she was talking to Little Lyrica about the photos that Safari sent. Um, Big Lyrica's like, nope, I said he sent something inappropriate. I never said a photo. And then Safari said that he never even sent, he never even said it to anybody that he sent a photo to her. And I'm like, oh my God. And then Moniz chimes in and says, um, you know, well, you know, her mama said that. And then, you know, then Moniz and Little Lyrica and Big Lyrica, they get into it, and Moniz is taking off the stage. I'm like, what the hell? So then we also have uh, Mama Daph. She gets into it with um, Big Lyrica, telling her, you know, <laughs> she looks like an exotic animal, and, you know, telling her how, you know, everything that's going on between her and her family is really Big Lyrica's fault, and also to stop asking her son for some motherfucking money. And I'm just like, oh my God, like this shit is ridiculous as fuck. All right, so next we move over to Rockstar. So, you know, Nina asked Little Lyrica how did she feel. She said she was devastated by the things that Rockstar said about her. And Clutch and Pearl says he didn't believe it. So then Rockstar starts to, you know, backtrack on everything that he said the whole season. I'm like, wow, really? So basically, in a nutshell, he did lie on his dick about having sex with her. This was something that happened years ago, not something in the present day. And, you know, I'm like, so you went through this whole season talking about all the stuff that you did to her, but turns out it wasn't like 100% true. Like, that's bullshit. 
So, you know, Nina asked a question about the time that Little Lyrica and Clutch and Pearls were apart, you know, that they had like some kind of agreement, some kind of arrangement about what they did with other people. And, you know, they both says no, you know, whatever they, whatever he did when he was away from her, he did. And whatever she did was something that she did. To be quite honest with you, those two were giving me a fucking headache. So then, you know, Nina's asking about the DNA test. And the results come out, which we already knew this, that Clutch and Pearls is the father. And he says he already knew that. And then, you know, um, Little Lyrica, she is upset because, you know, her mother-in-law asked for a DNA test. And then, um, you know, Mama Dapp was like, she saw the text from Patrice. But then Clutch and Pearls was like, those text messages from Patrice were from, you know, they weren't recent. They were old. And, you know, um... Once again, Mama Dap, uh, she she is upset looking at uh, Big Lyrica because just a pure sight of Big Lyrica, she goes off on her. And, you know, um, like I said, they're arguing. And then, you know, Little Lyrica, she's backstage. And she's saying to Mama Dap that, you know, she won't be able to see her grandbaby until she apologizes to her mama. And I'm like, that, I'm like, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, you know, but whatever. And then, you know, she talks about how um, she a witch. And then Clutch and Pearls, he heard, he heard her say that. And like, whoa, like, chill out. That's my mama you talking about. Which she got to think about that. I get that she wants her mama to be respected. And I get that she, you know, um, don't want, you know, mama dabs and stuff to Big Lyrica. But at the same time, you that is his mother. And you still have to try to respect his mother, even though she's not respectful of your mama. So... You know, I, I saw where he was coming from with that. But Nina, you know, says, you know what, well, we're going to put it into this and we're going to move forward. And they escorted Mama and Dap off of this stage. All right, so next we move over to Amber, Diamond, and Sean Love. They are on the stage. So, you know, Nina asked uh, Rockstar why did he want to work with Amber Diamond. Now, my TV cut out and I didn't really hear it. So I didn't have to rewatch it. And I'm still not. I was when I rewatched it. I was half asleep. So um, I think he said the reason why he wanted to work with her is he felt like he could get something accomplished with her. I don't know what he felt like he could get, what he felt like he could get accomplished with Amber Diamond, who can't sing. Now Amber Diamond, on the other hand, is talking about how you know that song wasn't for her voice. You damn right it wasn't for your voice. She's talking about how she doesn't sing high like that. I'm like, girl, that really wasn't even high. But if you say so, she's talking about she sings low. If you say so, what the fuck ever. And, you know, uh, Rockstar says that she should be a model. And, you know, I, I agree with him because she is a beautiful girl. And, you know, Sean says that her lawyer said that she had a case against Rockstar. And then, you know, Rockstar starts to, starts to get into it with Sean's calling her old bitch and this and stuff. And I'm like, why is Rockstar sitting here getting into it with Sean Love? Like... Somebody explain that shit to me. Like, why is he in, getting into it with Sean, a woman, instead of him getting into it with a man, like, you know, Clutch and Pearls, but whatever. He, he's pussy made, if you want me to be honest with you. So, you know, Rockstar, he says that he didn't touch Amber Diamond, um, but uh, he's, well, she's the only cast member that he didn't touch, and he said that he's touched about four or five of them. I'm like, here we go, once again, line on your dick. So then we move over to Apple. So, um, Nina asked, uh, Clutch and Pearls, why did he want to work with Apple? And he says he liked, um, Apple's, um, personality. And then she asked Sean Love the same question. And, you know, Sean Love says she, cause she's a Captain Sabre hoe. I'm like, God damn. And Apple's like, well, I'm not a hoe, first and foremost. So then, you know, while they're talking, Sean and Apple start to get into one another and, you know, Sean was saying how Apple was broke. And, you know, Apple was like, I was broke waiting on you. So then Sean pulls out this uh, paper. And it's, um, it's an iten um, itinerary. And Nina reads it. And it says that she, um, you know, she spent $17,000 on Apple. And, you know, Sean says that she's going to get her money back, basically. Sean comes off a comp. She comes off like a fucking pimp to pink. So then also Sean says that, you know, Apple texts her basically to end their business relationship. And when it look when it comes down to Apple, you can clearly see that Apple has a lot of pain and a lot of hurt behind herself. So that's why she does the things that she does. And, you know, um, 
maybe they can get back to you know working with each other. I don't know. Like I said, looking at yesterday's loving hip, looking at the loving hip hop tea on Insta or Instagram, uh, Apple did like that com a comment where she, um, it said that Sean was jealous of her daughter. Um. So then we move over to Apple and that burnt ass master splinter looking ass motherfucker. So, um, you know, he is there remotely, so he's not in the studio with them. And, you know, he said that he told Apple six years ago that he, he and her mom had did a DNA test done and that he wasn't her dad. And Apple says that's bullshit. And then, you know, um, Nina asked um, Sean how she felt about him and, you know, Sean didn't trust the motherfucker. She said, you know, when she first saw him, he a ugly motherfucker and Apple's not. So she knew that he wasn't her daddy, basically. So then, um, then, you know, uh, this motherfucker gonna sit there and say, you know, what was, what was so, uh, wrong about what he did? Like, first of all, motherfucker, you sat here and pretended to be her daddy and you knew damn well you wanted her fucking daddy. And then he talking about how he wants to build a relationship with Apple and Apple's like, I'm good on that. And I'm, I'm with Apple, like, be good on that. Don't be in that, don't let that man anywhere near you. Like, what the fuck? Like, that's nasty and creepy as fuck. Ugh. All right, so next we're gonna move over to Monice. So Nina asked, you know, Monice about AD. And she says right now that things between her and AD are touch and go, so she's not quite sure what her relationship is with AD, but she does know that AD is somebody that she loves and as somebody that she sees a future with. And, you know, she wants to be, she wants to get back together with AD. So, you know, then Nina asked her, how does she feel about, you know, um, Rockstar and uh, Brooke making fun of her in the studio. And she basically says, fuck it. You know, I don't give a damn about that. And then Rockstar is sitting there talking about, you know, Monice, he, he knows Monice and Monice plays a victim. And I'm like, I don't think she was playing a victim with that one. I think Monice, really was on some different medication that just reacted differently to her body and she had a nervous breakdown. So, you know, um, K. Michelle, she stands up for her friend and I, I appreciated K. Michelle for that one, which I'm like, where the fuck did K. Michelle come from? Because the last time we saw K. Michelle, they escorted her off stage, but whatever. But like I said, I'm so happy that K. Michelle stood up for him, for Moniz. So then Rockstar starts to get into it with both, you know, Moniz and K. Michelle and I'm like, Rockstar, you are a bitch made pussy ass nigga because all you doing is going after the women because he called K. Michelle a hoe, a bitch, and all this. And I'm like, really, bro? Like, you are going at a woman. Like, you can't go out after a man. Like, that's some bullshit to me, if you be honest with me. So then we have, um, we move over to Candy. So, you know, Nina asked him, you know, What's it gonna, what is it gonna be between Candy and uh, Jay Wills? And I know he said he, if the wigs and stuff are still selling, I guess if all that stuff, if the candy stuff is still selling, he'll do the candy stuff. But mainly, he wants to focus on you know Jay Will, and it's not he doesn't rap all the time about him being gay. He's you know if you just listen to his lyrics. So then you know um, they talk to La Brit um, Nina talks to La Brittany, and La Brittany says that you know she didn't feel like when the whole thing that happened between her and Jay Wills was anything that was personal and he then um takes the time to apologize to LaBrittany finally and LaBrittany accepts his apology and you know K. Michelle says she likes his music and then you know Solo Lucci he was out there in the audience and Nina asked him about it he said he didn't understand the lyrics that he was saying but I guess at, in a nutshell he respects his music so that's cool for that one all right so a weird scene we see Rockstar and Clutch and Pearls they in the car and rocks up talking about going to the strip club. And I'm like, this motherfucker has sat here all season and lied on your wife saying he slept with her and you gonna go to the club with him? I can't. So then we um, talk about Ray J and his uh, bouncing beanie. So they show, you know, when his uh, beanie kept moving from side to side. And then they have one for little baby Melody. And you know, uh, since having baby Melody, he has a newfound respect for women. So he says, you know, he's talking about, you know, um, he, you know, we shouldn't treat women, you know, the way that they be treated. Well, we shouldn't look down on women. 
And, you know, after having, like after I said, after having his baby. So, Kay Michelle, she is so touched by that because she says that she, um, within the next week or two, she has to decide what she's going to do with her embryos. If she's going to carry them herself or if she's going to have a surrogate to carry them. And I'm like, an embryo with who? Who Kay Michelle got an embryo with? Is it that doctor that she's been with for the last few years? If it is, more power to Kay Michelle. All right, so lastly, we have Tierra on the stage. We got Paris. We got Picket Fence, Teeth, Akbar. We got Alejandro De Prune, And we got Snoopy, a.k.a. What's that a girl name? Sade, Shaniqua, whatever the fuck her name is. Don't give a fuck. So, you know, um, Nina's asking Tierra how, what, you know, what drew her to Akbar and why did she fall for him. And Tierra says that he's charming. And I'm like, okay, Tierra, if you say so. And then Snoopy was like, but then you beg for his number. She's like, no, bitch. I never beg for his number. Then they start getting loud with each other and start arguing with each other. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, here we go with this bullshit. Like, I don't care about any of this shit. I really don't care about, you know, the picket fence teeth, Akbar, the prune, or Snoopy. Like, I could do without those three. Um, so then he's talking about how, you know, um, Tierra was broke and... He wants to try to fix her, and I'm like, whoa. And who are you again? Like, before Love and Hip Hop, before this season, nobody knew who our Akbar was, but we've all known who Tierra Marie was, so yeah, shut the fuck up. So then, you know, Tierra wants to use that Cisco. Um, you are, no, who is that? You a liar, you a cheater, you a deceiver, heartbreaker. That's not Cisco. That is, um, oh shit, I know his name. Can't think of that damn name. Profile. That's his name. She used his song. I'm like, Tierra, really? But whatever. Um, and he talking about how he wants to be a daddy to her. I'm like, nigga, be a daddy to that dumb hoe that you call a wife. That's who you need to be a daddy to. No offense to her, but be a daddy to that woman. So then Bridget asked the question of why did he do what he did to Tierra? And Snoopy, she gets in her feelings and she tells Brooke, I'm not Brooke, but Bridget that nobody was talking to her. And Bridget's like, well, bitch, I was talking to you, so shut the fuck up. So then Akbar says something to my niece, and I'm like, what did he just say to my niece? So then, you know, they start playing his music, and I'm like, they finna, somebody's finna do something on that stage. So we did see security run to grab somebody. I don't know if it was my niece, but... We'll find out next week because that is where the reunion actually ended. So that was Love and Hip Hop um, Hollywood Season 5 Reunion Part 1. Like the video, leave your comment, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys later.